Well, glory to God. Welcome to Wednesday night. Rock Creek Church, I'm glad to be here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's stand and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your house tonight. We pray that as we lift you up, God, that Lord, uh, all men be glorified to you, as your word says, or lifted to you. God, I thank you, Father God, that you have a plan for tonight. We pray, Father God, that you'd stir people by your word. We pray that, Father God, your Holy Spirit would just uh, reside over everything we do tonight. And God, we pray that we would just, as your children tonight, be able to lift you up, God, to just make you feel proud of us and, and receive our praise and worship. We love you tonight, Father. We thank you, God. You're worthy of our praise. And Lord, we thank you for your presence in this service. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, once you find somebody, tell them you're glad they're here for you to worship with. Let's celebrate the Lord tonight. Thank you. 
verse 16, it said, And he said to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it, and Elisha put his hands upon the king's hand. I want to just talk to you a little bit tonight about his hands on our hands. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for tonight. I thank you for the blessings of your word, and I thank you that your word is true. I pray, Father God, that as I share what you put on my heart tonight, I trust, God, that, Lord, every one of us will hear what the Spirit is saying to us personally. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that, God, uh, uh, that Lord, when we leave here, we'll know that, God, you have given us something uh, privately as well as publicly. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for the voice behind the words. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for being present here with us. And we pray, God, and we ask that every one of us will just uh, uh, be sensitive and near your presence tonight and let us hear what you're saying to us in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen and amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You know, I'm going to have a, a long message for you tonight, but I believe it's an important one. And uh, especially when we're in this time of prayer right now, we need to realize how important it is and what we're doing right now. In prayer, we always we always need prayer in our life, but there are certain times like like this that we're in that it needs to be our focus. And, and boy, is there ever, has there ever been a time when our nation, our land, our families need prayer more than today? Amen. I'm telling you, we need God's intervention. Amen. We need His presence and everything that's going on. So I want you to look at this and notice a few things that God God just uh, put on my heart to share with you tonight. First of all, Joash, the Bible, if you'll, if you'll go uh, into the earlier parts of this chapter, you'll, you'll find out that, that Joash wasn't the most obedient king there was. In fact, the Bible described him as he had some evil ways about him. But I want to tell you, when trouble happened, he knew where to run. How many of y'all know we need to know where to run when things begin to happen? We ought to run when good things are happening, too. But aren't you glad that we've got a God that, that he doesn't turn his back on us when we run to him in our need? Amen? I know people that have got saved out of their need. Amen? Because they came to God when they really were in need of a situation, been attacked by the devil or something, came across their life that was devastating, and then all of a sudden their eyes opened up to realize where their help comes from. How many of y'all know that God would much rather you uh, learn and be ready and prepared by his word than by hardships? Because I want to tell you, we're going to learn. we got a little ring over there. Let me, let me fix it real quick. There's two ways we're going to learn in life. How many of y'all want to learn the easiest way? Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I like to learn the easy way. You know what we're either going to learn when it comes to God? We're either going to be, learn by his word or we're going to learn by pain. Yes. How many of y'all have learned both ways? <laughs> I certainly have. Amen. But thank God when the pain came, I knew where to run. Yes. Amen. God delivered me. You know what? I, I did enough sin in my life that I didn't deserve any second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh chances. But God was still there when I called on him. He still forgave me. He still believed in me. Do you know how much Jesus believed in you when he died on the cross? Hallelujah. Not believed in us, Lord, but y'all know what I'm saying. He had faith in us as children of God that we would do the things, that we would reach to him, that we would run to him and know that he is the help that we need in life. So I want to tell you, Joash, uh, uh, everything is falling apart. They were getting defeated on the battlefield of Syria, but Joash ran to where his help was. And he knew that Elisha was the man of God. He knew that he would have the word of God. So he learned, he, he knew that if he learned, ran to where the word was, that he would receive the help. Isn't that what we're doing through this time of prayer and fasting right now? We are running to the Lord. Because I want to tell you, there's, there's things going on in the earth today me and you can't change by ourselves. Amen? And we need help from above. Would somebody say Amen. And with all that's going on, we're still the most blessed people that are on planet Earth. Would somebody say amen? amen? Glory to God. But I want to tell you, he knew where to run, and, and that's, that's why we're doing what we're doing, because we know where our help comes from. Our help comes from God that made heaven and earth. And so we're, we're petitioning God. We're seeking him for our family, for our nation, for our church for all the things in our lives so that we can be effective in these last days. And I do believe Jesus is still coming back. Does anybody believe he's coming back and he's coming back soon? 
I believe Matthew 24 paints the picture that we're seeing happening in our backyard right now. And I believe that Jesus' return is here at the door. At any moment, the trumpet can blast, and Jesus will return, caught up and catch up the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we'll forever be with him. I'm looking forward to that day. Amen. But till, till he comes, we're to occupy till he comes. Not just to sit idle, not just to do nothing, but to occupy and to gain ground for the kingdom when somebody say amen. I want you to look at that, that, that Joash's uh, uh, request. It brought some instructions. Read again verse 14. Now, Elisha was fallen sick of the sickness world of death. Now, this is the last thing recorded that Elisha did before he died. He was there sick. He was, about, he was on his deathbed. And this is when Joash came to him. Joash still, still, when it seemed like his health was not at its strongest point. You hear what I'm saying? When it seemed like his health, Elisha laying there sick on the bed, was not at its strongest point, Joash still believed in the anointing that was there. I'm telling you, if you go through a season where you pray or you run to God and it seems like no help is coming, Trust the anointing, trust the power of God that has always been there because God's timing is perfect. And if you come to him with a pure heart, if you come to him with an honest petition, if you come to him with a desire to say, Father God, I need you. Lord, I need your touch. I need your guidance. I need your direction. Lord, and, and you come with an open heart and say, Father, forgive me. Cleanse me. I come before you as an open door to change, shift anything in me. If I'm the problem, if I'm what caused this problem, shift it in me. But Lord, I come to you and I'm saying, I can't do this. Isn't that, isn't that the place we all have to come to before we get saved? Is we realize, I can't, I can't do this on my own. I can't make it on my own. You know, the best, best one of us without Jesus is still going to make it to heaven. Amen? You can give me the most moral person uh, that lives on the earth, but they have, if they rejected Jesus and not accepted him, they're still going to split hell out of them. Amen? What gives us that opportunity to receive Jesus and change our life is when we expose ourselves to him and say, God, here I am. I am made by you. I'm put here on earth. I have a son by you uh, here on earth. I want to fulfill that assignment. And on that, God, I've got myself in a mess. And I can't find my way out of it. So, God, I need your intervention. Would you forgive me? Would you cleanse me? Would you guide me? Would you lead me? As a Christian, we got to come to him with desperation sometimes. Yes. Even if the need is desperate. Won't you just be desperate to be with God? Yes. Amen? We ought to desperately need God. Need not only his help, as we say it a lot of times, not only seek his hand, but seek his face. Amen? But thank God sometimes we, we get what's in his hand. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God still has it. God still has it. If your answer has not come yet, hold on. God still has it. Elisha was on his deathbed, but Joash knew that he still had the anointing to give the answer. Amen? And boy, this is the part that really just blessed me in this story is this. Elisha told him, he said, he said uh, go put your hands on the bow and arrow. He brought it over there. And, and uh, Elisha stood up and he put his hands on his hands. He said, now open the window and we're going to shoot the arrow together. And I picture Elisha, old, you know, in his weak state, getting out of bed with all this strength. And still that anointing was so strong upon him. He put his hands upon the hands of King Joash and they shot the arrow out. And he said, you have just shot the arrow of deliverance. Your deliverance from the Syrians. There's more to the story we could go on and elaborate on. But I want to tell you that God, that Joash knew when Elisha put his hands on his hands that he was going to be guided in the right way. You know, Grace, she's been a, a, a Donna and, and Marla's been working with her to learn how to write her letters because she'll be going to school next year. And uh, they've been sitting down with her. Some letters she has some problems with. And so I've watched Donna many times over the last few weeks. You know, she'll go over and get behind her and she'll put her hand on her hand as she writes the letter. And sometimes just that, that touch of feeling the movement and letting, letting the bigger hand lead. You know, hearing what I'm saying spiritually. Letting the bigger hand lead in the right motion. Then when that hand is taken off, we know how to do it. Hallelujah. 
I'm telling you, that's what we need from God. Don't we need His hand on our hands right now in this time in our life? We need His hands on our hands how to pray for our families. We need His hands on our hands how to navigate through these, these times with our nation and how to pray for our leaders and, and how to think and how to vote and how to, how to go forward. I'm telling you, we need God's hand on our hand. Amen? To guide us so that that anointing would come forth. And I'm here to tell you tonight, that's exactly what we're doing by praying and seeking the heart of God. Is asking for God's hands. And I can promise you this. If you seek Him and do not fail, do not stop, but seek Him. How long do you pray over me till the answer comes? Amen? Say, so, well, I prayed. Nothing happened. Well, that's not what God says. He said, you all heard the story about the lady that needed needed bread. The neighbor came knocking on the door at like 3 or 4 in the morning. And he said, go away, go away. He said, no, I have, I have visitors. I, I don't get bread. Please give me some bread for my visitors. And he said, go away. So here a little bit, knocking on the door again. I said, I need some bread, I need some bread. And the man of the house got up and gave the bread, the Bible says, not because uh, he was thrilled to do so, but because of their uh, importunity. In other words, their persistence. They did not give up. Let me tell you what. There's two things, there's two things we need to apply here. We pray in faith. We believe God hears when we ask for it. But how long do you pray? You keep praying until the answer comes. I've said it to you many times lately that, that that's the envelope where we use faith between the asking and the receiving. We want to be people of faith, but then we have a problem waiting, and waiting is the only place we get to use faith. Hallelujah. We're having faith to see some things in our church. Amen. We're having some faith to see some things. We're having faith to see the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in these last days. We're having faith to see the coming of the Lord. Amen. And you know what? We're going to continue faith, continue praying, continue believing until the answer comes. There's people we've been praying for to get saved or, or come out of a black sin condition. We're going to keep praying until we see it. There's people in this church who've been dealing with sickness for a long time. We've seen people healed. Why not them? I don't know why God has the answers I don't, but we're going to keep praying until we see the answer come. Hallelujah. So keep on. Don't give up. Amen. Hallelujah. Some, some of y'all probably thought uh, your pastor had gone nuts when, when the, I called for a, probably the first fast of call for in years and, and do a 21 day one. That's a nutcase thing. There. No, but you know, there's, we're using wisdom. We're doing far too fast or whatever. But I'm telling you, you know, we've got to be obedient to the Lord. And just as we navigate things that God tells us to do and gives us instructions to do and are patient with Him, I'm going to tell you, we ought to be patient when we ask Him for His answers, for His direction, for the things going on in our life. Because God knows what's best, and He will not withhold any good thing from His children. Amen? Why don't you say that when we say, God will not withhold any good thing from His children. He's going to bring it about, but we have to submit to His time. And we have to stay in faith, believing. Somebody say, Amen. Now, we need to do also like Joash. There's one other point I'm going to make to you tonight. We need to do like Joash did. Is that even though he had made some mistakes in the past, he was in need. And so he boldly came into where Elisha was. And I want to tell you that you have the right to boldly come into the throne room of God tonight. Amen? You have the right to boldly come into God's throne room and petition Him just like we did before service, how we've been doing during service here. And how we're doing is we pray to God. I want to tell you that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. It is the throne of grace. Why? Because the only way we get to come in is through the blood of Jesus Christ. How many of y'all are glad when Jesus died, that veil in the temple was rent, the Holy of Holies was exposed to all men that only the high priest could go into? But Jesus, our high priest, paid the price as the Lamb of God, and that way was made open for us that every one of us can come boldly before the throne and pray to the Father ourselves. Amen? I'm thankful that I don't have to pray your prayers for you. Amen? Look, I'm a priest and king of the Most High God, and you are too. According to the blood of Jesus, he's made us to be priests and kings. Amen? And so you can do that. And the Bible says to come boldly before us tomorrow. I want you to look at that with me. Hebrews 4, 14, and 16. Um, 
It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. In other words, keep on believing. Amen. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Jesus feels everything you feel. Amen. But was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hallelujah. You have the right to come in boldly. Amen. And not because you're so good, but because Jesus was so good and his grace, mercy, and blood cleansed us and made us whole. Amen. Amen. Jesus made that possible. You know, it's like I heard the story of a little boy. A little boy, he uh, came, came just walked into a, a big bank downtown. Walked right by the, the guard. Rock, walked right by the tellers. Walked right by the vice president and a line of people waiting to see the president of the bank. And there was a, a sign there saying no admittance. And the little boy walked right by that, right up to the president and started talking to him. And nobody said nothing. You know why? Because the president was his daddy. I got news for you. The president's your daddy. Better than the president, God's your daddy. Amen? Hallelujah. The man in charge, not the president, but the man in charge is your daddy. God is your father. Amen? So he loves us. He loves his children. And so that's how we can walk boldly into his presence, just like Joash did with Elisha. Inspect God to show up, put his hands on our hands and whatever we're dealing with right there. Amen? How many of y'all would like God to have his hands upon every issue that you and your family are dealing with right now? Hallelujah, I sure do. Amen? Well, we can. How do we? Is we pray. We petition God. We praise Him. We thank Him. Remember, thanksgiving and praise is part of prayer. It's communication with God. Amen? So let that be. Lord, let that be a part of your communication with God. Thanksgiving and praise and, and petition Him for what's going on. And God will show up and put His hands on us. Why? Because we are His children. We have access to through the blood. Look at look at two more scriptures and then I'm going to line this down and we're going to pray together before we, we dismiss. Romans 8 and 14. Look at that real quick. Romans 8 and 14 says this. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Glory to God. Amen. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Glory to God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified yes. together. I, for I reckon, that shows that, that I guess Paul was a Texan at heart. For I reckon. <laughs> for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Yes. We are God's children through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Anybody here with me tonight? Amen. Go to Matthew 19. I just want to show you the heart of Jesus toward you tonight. Matthew 19, verses 14 and 15. Back up to verse 13. It says, Then were there brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer, little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven and he laid his hands on them and departed thence. Jesus loves handling kids. And if we're God's kids, Jesus can't wait to get his hands on our hands. He can't wait to touch us in our situations and to guide us in the way the arrows of our life ought to shoot forth. Amen? But you know what? We have to come to him.
the children wanted to come. Who got the blessings of the hands of Jesus being laid on them? The ones that came to Jesus. And there were always somebody, even the religious people, trying to stop you sometimes. I'm praying for what, 21 days? That's not necessary. You'll always have somebody that's even going to shoot down any righteous effort. Amen? I'm going to tell you what. Realize, you know, realize this is about you and God. Amen? You and God. If you accepted Jesus as his son, as your savior, you committed your life to him, you love him, I want to tell you that, that you are God's child. You've come out of it. See, everybody says, well, we're all, we're all born, you know, everybody that's born, we're all brothers and sisters. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm not. We're all, we're all part of the human family, but some of us came out of just the human family and were born into God's family and we came born again. Amen. Amen. Those are my brothers and sisters. Now, yeah, we're still a part of humanity and the human family. We don't, we don't uh, separate ourselves. We reach to them. Amen. And I want to tell you, those who are truly of our family are those who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the children of God. Why? Because we've been born again. Amen. Aren't you glad you're born again? Yes. Aren't you glad that you've got somebody to run to that has the anointing? Jesus is the anointed one. Amen. Man, greater than Elisha. Elisha was just a servant. But Jesus, who we run to, is the anointed one. That's why Christ means the anointed one. If you'll, you can read on uh, in this chapter and find out that there was so much anointing in Elisha that after this event and that Elisha died, they put him in a, in a tomb or, or a gravesite. And, and uh, that was the story where uh, there were some uh, soldiers coming along, enemy soldiers, and there was uh, some of uh, uh, other soldiers there. And so they were trying to hide, and they threw one of the guys in the in the grave side, side of Elisha. And, the, and it was a dead guy. It was a dead man that got killed in the battle. They didn't want to be seen, so they threw the dead guy in the grave of Elisha. And when the, when the man hit uh, the grave spot where the bones of Elisha were buried, he was revived and came back to life. Tell me that the anointing is not a lasting anointing. And the anointing is not powerful. And we're just talking about one of God's servants. Amen? Hallelujah. What I'm talking about to you tonight is when we go to Jesus, the anointed one, and we call out to him, we need to come boldly before his throne. We need to come with our petitions in hand and heart. And as we petition him during this season, particularly right now, I want to tell you, we ought to expect and wait, wait for God's instruction of what to put our hands on. Did you hear that? Because yeah. Elisha told Elijah, or Elisha told the Joash, uh, get a bow and arrow, pick it up. God may tell us to pick up something or put down something. Amen? And when we're obedient, his hands will then go to our hands. And we'll have the leading, the anointing of the Spirit to go forth and make decisions do the things we need to do. Why? Because we'll be guided by a hand that's greater than ours. Amen. Hallelujah. His hand in our hand. With that in mind, I want to ask you just to stand with me for just a few minutes here. And we're going to just pray together before we dismiss this service. You can just keep that role emerging over there because I'd like the people watching online to, to join with us. But if we set some things on an agenda. Uh, on Sunday that we're going to pray for through this fast. And I'm just going to uh, pray with you up here. I want you to join in. And I would, God would have you to pray over these situations. And we're going to petition the Lord uh, together about these uh, target needs. And pray for God's blessing and His, uh, his uh, uh, presence and His hands to be upon every issue. Would you all agree with that? Now, you all are quiet tonight. Is anybody awake tonight? I think that rain put us all in the spirit of slumber. That was a good rain, though, wasn't it? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say I'm ready to pray. Ready to pray. Well, let's agree together about these things before we go home tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you tonight. And we petition you, Lord. We thank you and praise you. We come to you first with thanksgiving and praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. And thank you, Father, for giving your son, Jesus, that, Lord, we might find our way in new life. Thank you that because of that, because we receive Jesus, that we are now sons and daughters of the Most High God. And so we love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. 
We ask you to come move and help us right now as we pray. And we thank you, God, that as we pray tonight, God, we know that according to your will or according to your word, that if we pray according to your will, you hear with us. And if you hear us, we have the petitions we ask for. Father, we'll follow that which you've instructed us to do, Lord, during this time of prayer. And so we ask you tonight, first of all, for health, healing, and recovery in our families, in our nation right now. We ask in the name of Jesus that those are, that are going through any sickness, whether it's through this pandemic or other illnesses, we just rebuke the sickness and disease that has been put forth by the enemy. And in the name of Jesus, we agree tonight, God, for health and healing to be released in Jesus' name. Everybody say, health, health. Healing. healing, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, God, for it. We rebuke sickness and disease. We come against it. And we thank you, Father, for the anointing of, of the Lord to just be released. Father, we also ask for the healing of our, our nation, God, and, and in relationships. We pray, Father God, that in respect to all races and all peoples, that, God, we would learn to respect one another. That, Father God, there be a respect and a love, God, to, to come in. And, Lord, we're not going to have it unless we ask for it. We ask you, Father, for it. We ask that, God, we would see one another as God's children or those that are in need of the family of God. We pray in Jesus' name you let our hearts be, be pure before those that are our brothers and sisters. And God, let our hearts yearn for those who don't know you. God, let love win in every case in Jesus' name. We pray for the healing of our nation and our relationships, God. And Father, we pray, God, for your blessing and your help upon our leaders and our law enforcement and our military. Father, we need them, we appreciate them, and we pray in the name of Jesus that the help of the Lord Jesus Christ will be released to every one of them that they may receive the help, the health, the healing, the recovery, and everything that's coming against them at this time. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, we also pray, God, Lord, for our leaders and God for the, the election coming. We pray that this election would bring about your will. Father, we pray for righteous leadership. We pray in the name of Jesus that, God, the, the word of God be upheld. We pray in Jesus' name that you would just, uh, uh, we pray that you would just not hinder uh, or that you would hinder the efforts of the enemy. God, we cancel every assignment of the enemy. And, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that the right leaders be elected to our nation. We pray, Father, for godly men and women to rise up in the White House in Washington and in our state governments. And we pray, God, that you would anoint us as the people of God to speak, God. Lord, by voting, by praying, by our love, God. We pray in Jesus' name that you would anoint and help our leaders, help our president, President Trump right now, and all those that are in authority right now. We pray your anointing on them. And, God, we pray that you would just let this, this election and this time be in your hands that your will be accomplished in Jesus' name. And Father, we also pray... Lord, the third thing tonight is for the doors of utterance to be open for our church. Father, we thank you, God, that the church as a whole throughout, throughout the world, Father, we pray that doors of utterance be given, God, to the church. And we pray that for our church as well. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that, Father God, you would uh, just uh, present opportunities, that you would open doors. We pray that those that would not listen before would have open ears. We pray that all of the lost of our families and our friends and our co-workers, God, that their hearts be opened up to receive the gospel. And that, God, you would anoint us, God. You would anoint us, God, to utter those things that you want us to speak. Let us speak in love, God. You said speak truth in love. So, Father, let us do that as individuals and as a church. And I pray, Father, God, for your anointing to be upon us. And that, God, you would open doors of utterance, God. To open doors of utterance for those that need to hear your word. Father, God, fourthly, God, tonight... And God, I, I believe more important than anything is, God, we pray for the harvest of souls. God, we ask, God, that you'd save the lost. We pray in Jesus' name that you'd redeem and bring those back in that are in a backslidden position. We pray that souls be saved, people be brought back to where they need to be with you. Father, we thank you, Father God, and we ask you, Father God, we ask you to send laborers to the harvest. And God, let us be some of them. Father, anoint us to be laborers in the field, God, to, to be faithful, to witness on the job, to be faithful, to speak of the hope that's within us, God, when we're asked about it. Lord, let us be, be uh, representatives. Let us be, uh, God, uh, those uh, diplomats that, that are, are from another land, God. 
We thank you, Father God, that, Lord, you've called us to be ambassadors, God, in earth. God, and we just let us carry the kingdom of heaven, God, to those that need you. And, Father, we pray that you'd fill up this barn with souls. God, we pray in the name of Jesus, you would anoint us to be, be harvesters, to bring in the harvest. God, we pray that you'd compel them to come in. We pray in the name of Jesus that you'd draw the lost to this house. Lord, also draw believers that are serious, God, about working for you in these last days. And, Father, we pray, God, help, help us as pastors, God, to, to hear your direction, to know your heart, to speak the things of God, to, that, Lord, we may be led by your mighty hand. So we thank you, God, and we ask you, Father God, for your boldness. We ask for your anointing, that souls be saved. God, we pray, Father God. Lord, we pray as Acts 24 and 29 says, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy th servants that with all boldness that we may speak your word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy son, Jesus. Lord, we pray that. We pray, Father God, that, Lord, we be able to speak the word boldly and to go forth, God. Lord, that we may see souls saved in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, lastly, tonight, God, we ask you, Father God, as you put on our heart to pray, God, we ask you that our families, every one of our families, God, you promised us in your word, God, that us and our households would be saved. God, you told us as parents, train the child up in the way she go, and his holy will not depart from it. God, we petition you with all the promises of your word for our families, for our friends. And in the name of Jesus, we claim them. Hallelujah. Would y'all just say that if you've got family that needs the Lord, say, we claim them in Jesus' name. We call them, God, from the north, the south, the east, and the west. God, we pray that you bring them into a more intimate relationship with you and encounter into your presence. Lord, as we see the day of your return approaching, God, do work in our family. Hallelujah. Do work in our family. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Save our families. Lord, fill this house. God, with every family member of every member of this church in Jesus' name. And Lord, compel those to come in that are out in the highways and the byways. God, we pray in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, that you would draw the lost. Let us see a great mighty revival. And God, a great mighty homecoming in these last days. Father, we just thank you. We praise you for it. We glorify you. Won't you just pray for a minute in your own way? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We glorify your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you tonight. We worship you. We thank you, God. We praise you, God, for the result. Now, Lord, we just believe God tonight. Lord, as we've heard your word, that God, we're going to believe that word and we're going to apply it. God, we're going to come boldly in the days of this week. The weeks to come, we're going to come boldly before your throne because we know that we're your children. We're forgiven. We're cleansed. We're going to stay walking in righteousness. God, we're going to come boldly before your throne and petition you. And we believe that, God, you're going to put your hands upon us like Elisha did for Joash, that the victory may come. Lord, we just thank you for using us. Thank you for letting us be a part of what you're doing in the earth in these last days. And we just give you praise and thanks and glory for it all. Tonight. Now, Father, I ask you to go with each one tonight. I thank you for each one that has took the time to be in your house tonight. And I pray that the word, God, that's going forth would not return void, and I know it won't because that is your word. I pray that it would prosper and profit in the things which you send, and we are the things that you send. So, God, let it prosper in us. Let's be mindful, God, that your hands are ready to touch ours. And, God, you're there present with us. So be with us. I pray, God, that you're the let your face shine upon each one. God, let the grace of God be upon them. Let them show your peace and your blessing. And just watch over each one and bring us back together safely next Sunday. We we'll give you glory. We we'll give you thanks. We we'll thank you for tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say it. Amen. 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 Well, praise God.